Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Looking at the altar. I don't know what we call this, this series here when we're trying to get back into the dates and stuff. We call that the Repairs of the Breach series. Uh, coming out of Isaiah 58 where we remember the Sabbath days and the, the um, feast days and all of that kind of thing. But, you know, this is part of it too as far as getting back into the sacrificial offerings. Now, this right here is what you're looking at is a burnt offering. Yep, this is the first day of the eighth month in 2019. Uh, somewhere around, I forgot what the, October to something, October the 28th or 29th or something like that. But this is the, this is actually a burnt offering. And that's what I wanted to discuss here is burnt offerings. Whenever you look at the uh, new moon celebrations in the Bible, um, it tells you in almost every verse that has the phrase new moon in it, it's talking about doing a burnt offering or blowing a horn over the burnt offering. And so I asked the question on one of the classes, what is a burnt offering? I got one response from uh, Danny Fowler who talked about it being a sort of prayer. And um, at, at one point in my life, I was believing that as well. Um, and I still do pray just, just in case. But, you know, I'm believing that he's talking about these actual uh, burnt offerings. We had another commenter, um, loving my brethren as myself, who had me to do a study on the Zadok priests. And I had never really uh, um, um, thought about Zadok priests before until that study. And what it turns out is that there was a subset of Levi's, a subset of priests who uh, kept the faith and, you know, kept the... the, the um, the um, uh, rules of the father without breaking them and he told them that in the end times which we are now is that their offerings would be accepted whereas the other offerings were not so when I when I understand that in light of books like Isaiah that talks about how he is sick of our offerings and you know how they, we were getting them wrong at, at, I put those two together and I see and you know in other parts of the Bible talks about how the Levites were were uh, doing were, were corrupt and they were doing wickedly even going in and taking offerings by force making the people regret having to make offerings and all of that so putting all that together and being in the end times I started to think that you know maybe we're going to actually get back into burnt offerings so what you're looking at right there is a burnt offering there is an animal under there um i hesitate to tell you what kind of animal there is under there because it's not in the scripture um i don't have any pigeons and that other bird that's mentioned along with pigeons doesn't even exist over here in america and so <clears throat> you can imagine what kind of bird i have there what kind of bird we commonly grow here in america and that's what i put in that um uh, in that fire there um, to make the burnt offerings. You see I have the pine there that you know you read about in some of the extra canonical books. There are 14 um, well, there are trees that the Father prescribes us, us to use. Pine is one of them. Cedar and, and different other um, uh, scented trees. He, he said he wanted part of the offering so we use pine this time. Um, but this is a burnt offering and I want to talk about it. You know get the get the um, get the old um, um, brain working get our brains working around uh these burnt offerings and are we supposed to be doing these see you have to understand the story they they were doing them up until the introduction of the romans into the church when the romans took over the church uh there uh one of the things that they got rid of along with the sabbath day and obedience to the bible and mosaic laws and all of that was these burnt offerings and so when we look at those guys and how they uh, manipulated the church you always have to wonder should we unmanipulate it should we change it back because you remember those guys are of a different religion than us who you know believe in the bible um those people who follow those ordinances and rules passed down from the pope and even into the protestant church today are of a different religion they're claiming our scripture they're claiming our bible they're claiming even the name of christ but when it comes down to whether or not they're obeying what the bible actually says one could argue that they don't even believe that they are supposed to so th when they are so quick to jump up and say hey you guys aren't supposed to be doing that i'm looking at them like oh uh, who are you to tell me you know you're the same one that told me that I'm not supposed to be keeping the Sabbath day. You're the one who told me that I'm supposed to be eating pork. You're the one who told me that I'm not supposed to be
to be keeping the commandments or the laws or anything like that. And now you're telling me I'm not supposed to be doing this. Frankly, I don't trust you. I don't trust you because, you know, you, you're getting everything else wrong. How could you possibly get this part right when it's so important? Like I said, every time you look, almost every time you look uh, in the uh, King James Version for the word new moon, you see that you're supposed to be blowing, I mean, you're supposed to be doing a burnt offering. So, and burnt offerings of the Bible included putting animals on the altar and burning them all up to a crisp. That's what, it's unlike a peace offering or a free will offering or, you know, even a sin offering where people were allowed to eat of the flesh. When they actually did a burnt offering, it was burnt all the way up. And you have to remember that the Messiah, a lot of people going to jump and say the Messiah took care of that. Well, you have to remember that the Messiah said he didn't come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law. He came to, to make the law whole to un to make us to understand what the law and what we were supposed to be doing and that he didn't take anything away he actually added to it if anything he actually added to our responsibilities when we start thinking about the sermon on the mount and the rules associated with that he didn't take anything away and so did he take away the burnt offering i don't know when the bible doesn't tell you that it says in the, in some places that we'll do these sacrifices uh forever throughout our generations and you know i've argued plenty of times what does forever mean and you know the reverend pastor deacon dr doug he can't tell me you know what forever means because he wants to believe that we're not supposed to be doing these statutes and these these kind of these kind of um uh, things anymore. So to him, forever, he he he's still working on his own uh, interpretation or definition of what forever means. Um, uh, you know, to answer that question, I guess. But you know, <clears throat> here it is. Wanted to talk about uh, these offerings. We we well, this is our first time doing it on a new moon. Um, we just uh, realized um, not too many days ago that we are required to do these on a new moon. We are told to do these on the new moon, and this is the first time we've done it. We've actually blew the horn, and I may blow the horn as part of this video. I don't know. Hey, stay, Stacy. She can't hear me. I have somebody send out the horn, um, and I'll blow the horn. We've already blew it a lot today believe me because it tells you to blow the horn over the offering and um being the first time i may have overdone it blowing the horn got on the net uh the uh, uh neighbor's nerves a little bit but you know they're all right you got all this smoke in the air too they're smelling they smell it is a burnt animal too you know i had to let down the windows in my house because it was creeping in there and i wonder if that ain't the, the, the father's divine will giving everybody a little taste in this community of this burnt offering that's taking place um these people don't realize how much you know we do for them praying for them every day and 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 they don't even realize the stuff we do for them in the material like chopping wood for them and fixing their houses and plumbing and and cars and different and stuff um um you know they don't realize you know the power of you know sitting back and praying for them so um but they're getting a whiff of this now you know unless they you know um uh, uh are out of town or whatever you know the whole community is full of smoke right now as as this one continues to burn and it's almost done we're just checking on it i like to make sure that it gets all burnt up when i do these um and praise the father uh, some of my sons you know if i do go in the house or whatever some of my sons will help me keep track of it um making sure that the whole thing is burnt up we don't want the the dog or something to come and actually eat the thing you know um we want it to actually you know be a full burnt offering so we'll tend to it but you know <clears throat> i see what what kind of discussions can we just can we start on the on this uh burnt offering here um i don't know i'm gonna go ahead and close it out there and go read the comments and see what you got to say uh shalom